to Would I Lie to You, the show that separates the truth from the twaddle. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a brilliant actor who says he gets upset when he works abroad because he misses his family so much. Like I said, he's a brilliant actor. <laughs> it's John Sim. And a sports presenter who's been described as the female Gary Lineker, although she doesn't have big ears or stink of crisps, it's Gabby Logan. <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, she's the host of a Sunday morning show on Radio 2, which I find is the perfect listen for when I've just got in from clubbing. It's Angela Scanlon. <laughs> And a comedian and actor who's appeared on CBeebies. He was almost late tonight because of rail replacement works on the Ninky Nonk. It's Chris McCausland. <laughs> we begin, as always, with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Chris, you're first tonight. OK, they offered me this in Braille, but as blind people go, I'm pretty rubbish and I can't read any of that nonsense. So, <laughs> Lee, will you please do me the honours and read what is on that card? I certainly will. For a whole month, I thought my neighbour was ignoring me and he thought I was ignoring him until he found out I was blind and I found out he was deaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's your next-door neighbour, is that right? Um, Do you need me to read it again? Yeah. <laughs> he's my neighbour, David. Right. Um, there's three flats. I live in the middle and he lives on the bottom. And who lives upstairs? A policeman. And, <laughs> and, and he can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> So, you thought he was being standoffish? I thought he was being the rudest person that I've ever met. <laughs> I was there, for example, on the day that he moved in, and I said hello to him, and he completely ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he didn't. Maybe he went... Well, I, I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> and... <that's... laughs> you have perfectly highlighted <laughs> exactly what probably happened. So, he, he's deaf... Yes. ..but he can see? Yeah, I, otherwise he'd be in real trouble, really. <laughs> Just because wouldn't he see you saying hello to him? Over the course of a month, there were separate incidents where we each thought the other was being rude. So... The first time that he was moving in, he was carrying boxes into the house and I was halfway up the stairs. I shouted hello to him and he never said anything back to me. And I thought, that's a bit rude. And isn't you it? knew he was there just through hearing. You heard the, the sound in, and you yeah, knew, oh, I mean, that'll be the new bloke arriving. Contrary to popular belief, deaf people do make a noise. <laughs> 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 so. <laughs> But, but other occasions, I would be outside, like, doing something with the car. I, like, packing the car, unpacking the car, maybe doing Not some... driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, we... Me, me, me wife has to do that for okay. entirely legal reasons, Rob. <laughs> I reckon I could probably do the motorways if they had them things off the bowling alley down the side. <laughs> <laughs> A number of times, he'd come back to the flat, and he'd, like, waved and smiled at me and I'd not known he was there and completely blanked him. And then I'd heard him walk past and I'd <laughs> shouted hello to him, but I was talking to his back then and he never answered me. And this went on for quite, quite a while, really. How did it resolve itself? Yeah. Did the policeman well, intervene <laughs> and sort I called the police and he came down. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had a hunch he must be deaf. I, I guess that that was the only possible, plausible option. <laughs> I'm exactly him? like that <laughs> with my audiences when they're not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bumped into his mum, um, who was visiting, and I said, 
like, he's deaf, isn't he? And she said, yeah. That's a, that's a bold opening gambit. <laughs> <laughs> we have each other's mobile numbers now, and, um, so we're able Hang to Hang on, send... let me think about this for a second. <laughs> <laughs> how, how does he answer the phone? We, we, we have text messages, Lee. Right, you know the next question, don't you? <laughs> So, <laughs> my phone talks. So it reads everything out, and if I, 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 I'm just to give you an insight, even the emojis. If you use an emoji, it tells you what the emoji is, and the smiley face, the one that the main smiley yeah. face, specifically for blind people, that one is called smiling face with normal eyes. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm expected to use the smiling face with sunglasses, but <laughs> it turns out as well, which took me by surprise, that he's Australian, which <laughs> you associated with the accent, don't you? But like he's just Australian in his head. <laughs> I mean, I know that's... Okay, let's let's. I mean, th this is this is becoming odd. <laughs> If they don't have to put it on the subtitles. <laughs> John, what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't believe it. I don't you believe think it. he made that up? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Gabby? There's lots about it that I don't think is true. You say, I believe it. I believe it. But I, you I'm, believe I'm it, not, they don't. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to overrule my team, though. No, no, oh, you haven't got the strength of character. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel strong enough about, about it to overrule. No, I mean, it's it is plausible. It is plausible. OK, <clears throat> we're going to say true. Right, they're saying it's true. Chris, truth or lie? It is 100% true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Chris and his neighbour really did think they were ignoring each other. Uh, John, you're next. I once stripped naked, then accidentally climbed into bed with my father-in-law. <laughs> Please see. Were you drunk? Yes. Was it his bed or was it his, a spare bed in your house? It was our bedroom in our house and they'd been babysitting. And so I noticed another presence in the bed, which I assumed to be my wife. Yeah. And well, so lovely I... thing to say about your wife. Well, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> love. It's just that you look like, you know, your dad. It was dark. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> She'd gone to bed before me, and she said, hey, watching telly, you know. What, what were you watching just out oh, of interest? Remember. I can't remember that. What time was it? Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning, probably repeats of this on Dave. <laughs> <laughs> So they, this is your bed. Where were you then? Were on sofas downstairs? No, we were, were in the spare room. So the, oh, that's lovely. You've given yeah. up your superior bed yes. for the in-laws. Yeah. Lee, what do you do when your in-laws come round? I make up a really lovely, lovely bed with uh, lovely silk sheets and a lovely thing and put that in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you, you've, you've come into bed, you yep. think that your, your wife, she's gone ahead of you. I, I thought it should be spark out. You spark know. out in the bed. Yeah, yeah, and I've often done this journey in the dark. So she's often in bed before me. Yes, And yes. I know what to do. I'm, I can do it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> With the clothes off, round the side of the bed, leap in. Give her a, a snuggle. Oh, did you? Did you? <laughs> did, you give her, did you give her a snuggle? I went to give. Did you? Her a snuggle. Oh no, did naked. You? Naked. <laughs> which way? Which way was he facing? <laughs> Thank God he was back in, hey? the other way. I spooned him. You spooned him. <laughs> like, like that makes it better. I think it's worse. I think you'd have to have done it both ways to know which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Were you spooning in the way you spoon when you want to have a cuddle as you go to sleep? Or were you spooning in a way which was hoping to just nudge her awake? 
look at this. There's a subtle difference he between knows. those I know two. that subtle difference. <laughs> but luckily, I wasn't quite that excited yet. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Words. It's quick, though. I mean, honestly, I mean, I whip it back the whip the thing. <laughs> I jump, I jump in, I go, I go for the spoon, <laughs> and as as I'm sort of approaching the body in the bed, um, I hear John, and I, I literally flew out of the bed. Ah! And um, and then the lamp went on, and um, I'm trying to put my underpants back on. Oh, you're completely naked. naked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the whole thing. I'm trying to get my underpants twisted. Fell over. It was like a comic. It was ridiculous. Why would you? Um, why would you go to the effort of trying to put your underpants on in front of them? <laughs> because I was naked. <laughs> Do it in front of them. This is right. Just you grab them and leave. That's the sort of strategic decision you make when you're used to doing that. <laughs> the first time, you can very easily think, I, I both want to leave and dress myself and make the mistake of trying to do the two things at once. Yeah. <laughs> and what would what happened in terms of the father-in-law? He, he was very, very lovely about it. And he went, uh, one too many last night? And I went, yeah. And that was it. What are you thinking? Is it striking you as true? That's definitely possible. I believe he has issues with alcohol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to. You're saying true? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah. Okay. I will go with my team and blame them. You're and say, say it's true. <laughs> okay. John, were you telling us the truth or were you telling us a lie? It is, in fact, sadly, true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Yes, it's true. John did climb into bed naked with his father-in-law. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Richard. <laughs> So, John, what is Richard to you? This is Richard. He's the stunt horse rider who galloped me through a moonlit forest so I wouldn't miss the Man United Bolton game. <laughs> Gabby, how do you know Richard? This is Richard. He is the flight attendant who persuaded me I wasn't dying, but I had trapped wind. <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with Richard? This is Richard. He came to my aid at the local tip when I lost my specs in his great big skip. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So, there we have it. Lee. Right. Would you like me to describe him, by the way? Would that help you suss out which of the three he might know? Yeah, a little, um, little... little bit of audio description. OK, well, he, he looks quite a cool dude, actually, so we can rule out that he knows David. <laughs> uh, actually, I think you might know him because he's dressed as a policeman and he's not talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, who are you going to quiz first? Right, John. He's the stunt man that covered you. No, the, well, uh, we were using horses in this production I was filming, and um, we were in Scotland, and that's when he offered to help me. But what, what was it you said? You said he galloped you to a television. So, what you, yeah. he, you got on the back? Spooned yeah. behind him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say I was spooning him. No, I was just riding on the back of his horse. And you were clothed. <laughs> Fully clothed. <laughs> yeah. And the horse would have been quicker than a car in this instance. In, in this instance, yes. We talked about it early in the day, and he said, oh, "I know exactly where you can watch it. There's a pub over there, and I can definitely get you there for kickoff." And he, and did. he, and he literally pulled up outside the pub. You jumped off and ran into the pub like a desperate cowboy. Well, no, he came in with me. Oh, he came in with you? Yeah. And where did you put the... Yeah. Well, the tied it up outside you the tied it up outside on the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Was this in, like, mid-America in the 1870s? What do you mean you tied... What thing did you tie it to? Well, I, I didn't see. I just got off the horse in, and then he came in. You got where you were going and you went into a bar and you didn't take the horse purely for the joke that would have followed. <laughs> Am I, am I the only one who doesn't know what the joke would be? Uh, the reason why you Why don't... the long face? Yeah but, yeah. The re... yeah, but the reason why you've never heard that joke, Rob, is because people... it's a bit sensitive with you, isn't it? <laughs> you sound like you've got quite a little round face. <laughs> isn't that lovely? Yeah. No, thank you very much, yeah. Chris. I sound what? like... It wasn't meant to be a compliment, but... <laughs> what kind of faces did the rest of us say? Yeah, like that's quite have? interesting, yeah. Take some time. Take some time with Lee in particular. Lee, 
<laughs> Lee just... He sounds like he looks like a cheeky little monkey who's the only one that knows he's about to fling a poo. <laughs> Can I use that on my posters for the next tour? <laughs> what about uh, David? Oh, David! Uh. From Voice Alone. He, he sounds like he looks like a Toby jug of a duck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is bang on! Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the I mean, it, That the... is the image I go for. <laughs> I think this deaf neighbour of yours was right to the first time. <laughs> right. Lee, who would you like to quiz next? OK, uh, Gabby. Just remind us, Gabby, for, so for the benefit of the So, this is Richard, and members. he is the airline steward who persuaded me I wasn't dying. I had trapped wind. OK, so what, what were your symptoms? I felt, like, uh, really breathless and... I, I just couldn't... I felt like I couldn't get a breath right. at first. You hadn't opened the window again, had you? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, my husband looked across the aisle and said, a bit pale. Well, you say your husband looked across, you mean he came from economy up to first class? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you look a bit pale, and I said, I can't get, I can't get any breath, and I just felt, I felt really, really um, uncomfortable. Where were you going to? We were going home. From? Well, that helps us. We were going home. <laughs> We were going from um, Gibraltar. Quite close to home at this point? No, quite early on in the flight, about okay. 10, 15 minutes into the flight, I started to feel a bit dodgy. Anyway, then, um, lo and behold, Richard came down and he said, yeah. you all right? I said, um, I said, I'm really not feeling great, actually. He said, come up here and brought me up into the galley. Yeah. And then, well, I heard him um, talking to um, the captain. Ooh. And um, and then I heard the word doctor being mentioned, oh, and I no. heard the words... Uh, oh, my God, what, what do you mean you heard the word doctor? Because well, that could be quite scary if he said, uh, listen, pilot, we need a... I'm not a pilot, actually, I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that, would have, that would have released the what? wind. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I thought I'd ruptured my appendix or something like that. And what kind of things did he say to calm you down? I think he said, well, if we do go down in the sea, don't worry, you're full of wind, you'll float for longer. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, he kind of knelt down in his very caring way and said, um, there is a possibility this could be trapped wind, which filled me with horror. Um, because it was just going to all come out at some point, and that's embarrassing. Yeah, but um, better than dying. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then he just went one step further, um, and he said to me, if we lower the plane, there's a good chance... Well, so, the, uh, so your internal pressure would be less? So he said, there's a good chance it could come out, but I've got to warn you... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would that work? Does the science add up there that you're more likely to point, release wind? At this Otherwise, point... By that logic, everyone would be farting on takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, you're not saying that it was beginning its descent? Well, I don't know how far out it would begin its descent, but... Um... Well, not 15 minutes after takeoff. <laughs> no, it wasn't 15 minutes. By this point, we're like, we're, like, over halfway into the journey. So, so he said to the, the, the cockpit, mm. bring it down, and did they do that? Apparently, um, they did. Quick, bring the plane down. I think she might blow. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens? They bring it down, and yeah. what was the effect on you? Well, um, within a few seconds... Uh, minutes, maybe. Yes. Um, a tiny, tiny, tiny little burp came out of my of, mouth. Of your mouth. Of your mouth. Yes. <laughs> and I thought, that's it. I'm good. And I walked back to my seat. Did so everybody like... cheer and clap? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, when I the say that, is, it, it didn't just... happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. The truth is, when None I say it, none of this has it, ever happened. I don't sounds... think you've even ever been to Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit of this that I believe is that you fart a lot. <laughs> What about David? Remind us of your um, claim. Uh, this is Richard. He came to my aid at the local tip when I lost my specs in his great big skip. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you doing at the tip? What were you getting rid of? I was getting... Not another body, David. <laughs> <laughs> Not another body, no. Uh. Um, I, I bury them. <laughs> Other than in acid. <laughs> <laughs> 
but no, this is two so, CD players yeah. and a DVD player. What did you do with them at the tip? I put them in the small electrical goods skip thing. <laughs> and so what did you do? Did you lean right over to put them further in the middle? I leant right over. Did you place them? Was it a shallow skip? No, no, it was deep. You had to go up a staircase, like a, a wheelie set of stairs. Yes, now most people throw things in skips by just lobbing them. They don't yeah. lean over. And I'm or trying to work up out... stairs and then lean over, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, you... the, the up the stairs thing, I'm not quite... I, I mean, how tall was this skip? Yeah. Why didn't you oh, just throw the... Oh, in? it was about a foot high, but I thought it would be fun to <laughs> climb a staircase. <laughs> Take us now to the crux, the, lo the, the losing right. of the glasses. The losing of the glasses. OK, so I I'm, I'm throw the things in, oh. uh, the skip, and they make a, a crashing sound, yeah. and I lean in to peer to see what I, the, what I in my mightiness have wrought. <laughs> my glasses are a bit loose and... You had quite a sweaty head from all of the effort of looking the two CD Absolutely. players and the, the, the effort player. going up all the stairs, thinking, this isn't very practical. What if I was throwing away a dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> and um, they slid down my sweaty Toby Jug duck feet. <laughs> I fell into the skip. And fell into the skip. Did you shout yeah. for help? I went, I went, excuse me! <laughs> and then what, Richard appeared? He, he appears. He goes into the skip. Yeah? I mean, I'd explained in words what had happened. I said, what my glasses say? just fell off. They should be directly below here. And I he, can't... Did he not say, well, and... in you go, then? Yeah, why no, did he think he it was didn't say in you go, then. He said, he said, it's all right, I'll go in and get them. And did you ask why? Why he'd go in and get them? Yeah. Why, did, did I want to talk him out of it? <laughs> <laughs> so, he'd come over and you'd said, could you go and get my glasses? <laughs> I quacked, he gave me some bread. <laughs> I said, actually, that's not good for me, I need seed. <laughs> Never, ever say that to a stranger at the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you get the glasses? Yes. Good. Right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team. Is Richard John's horseback hero, Gabby's steward saviour, or David's rubbish rescuer? Oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Really tricky. Uh, Chris. I, I can't go with Gabby myself. I don't know. Like That's trapped a... wind is very painful. <laughs> what about David? If anybody's going to the tip to do the physical work, it's, it's Mrs Mitchell, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So, who are you thinking, John? Well, we were chatting earlier in the green room and he told me he was a Man United fan. OK. OK, so, what are you going to say, Lee? We'll go John. You're going John. OK. Richard, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Richard and I am the flight attendant that helped oh! Gabby. <laughs> You're on national television. <laughs> Did you ask the pilot to lower the plane? We were descending anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Richard is Gabby's steward saviour. Thank you very much, Richard. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies. And we start with... <clears throat> it's Angela. I once chatted to an old man because I felt sorry for him. Only to find out later he was a global megastar. David's team. Well, we yeah. have to know who the global megastar is. Yeah, yeah, who, 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 who was, was he? Um, it's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you see Steven Spielberg and take pity on him? Um, the BAFTAs. I was doing the red carpet thing for BBC Three. So, had he stopped for an interview with you? Um, no, so I was, uh, you know, waiting for the next person to come up. It was, it was Michael Fassbender. And I was, you know, getting in the zone. And, and then I saw this, you know, very refined, older gentleman standing there. And I thought he was maybe somebody's dad. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of fuss around him, because he no. is Steven Spielberg. You'd think. He's, he looked a little bit lost. And I thought, I'm just going to have a chat with him, because it could be my dad, and I'd want someone to have a chat with him. Did you put the microphone there to have the no, chat with him? No, I just thought a real, it was an old a man real chat. life chat. So, what real did you say? Way, if you saw somebody a bit lost and a bit yeah. old looking to go, are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you lost? <laughs> 
Yeah. So also, you, stepped it was... to, you stepped away from the, your the cameraman and the crew. Yeah, so I had a bit of downtime. Yeah. There was a VT playing, whatever. Yeah. VT? VT. Oh. That would have been. Thought put one of his films on then. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway... What are you watching, old man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why is the monkey on the bike? <laughs> so what did you say to him, Angela? I was like, is, this, is it your first time with the BAFTAs? <laughs> and he said, um, no, actually, I've, I've been a few times, but not for quite a while. And I was like, OK, maybe he's not somebody's dad. And I said, oh, OK, who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Oh, I thought you said, who are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I just kept it loose, you know, who do you yes. want to win? Have you any favourites? It's been a strong year for film. You actually the said usual. film. <laughs> <laughs> do you work in the films yourself, though? <laughs> How did it conclude? And then I could feel the, the cameras coming towards us. And they were, like, interviewing him. Is that yeah. the idea? No, no, no. Well, as in, I just kept going. Because you saw the cameras? Yeah. You so you did have, start you, to bring the microphone. Yeah, yeah. When no, did no, the no. microphone... Well, I was mic'd, so he could be picked up on my what, microphone. So you, so you did you ask just... him to speak into your chest? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Similar height. Yeah. So why did you not think to use the handheld, then? Well, it would be a bit awkward if then I'm like, oh, he must be someone, can I have the microphone and keep talking to him? Well, you must have known that he was someone Yeah, prominent. obviously, but I can't oh. ask him. It would be a great last question in the interview. And, and just to <laughs> sum up, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> John, does it ring true to you? Could that happen? Think you everyone would, knows everyone would know what Steven Spielberg... Was he wearing glasses? Um, I think so. Are we playing Guess Who? <laughs> 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 I can't believe that in the whole time you were chatting, nobody went past and said, ''Hey, Steve, how are you doing?'' You know, and that maybe rang a bell. But they thought we were having an interview, I suppose. And but you didn't have a, a microphone rude. or a camera, so why do they think that? You are obsessed with this microphone, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> she is not pitch side with Dion Dublin. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> so what are you thinking, then? David, what about you? We're going to go lie. You're saying it's a lie. I'm saying it's a lie. Angela, Steven Spielberg on the red carpet. Truth or lie? He's a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> that noise signals time is up, it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that the scores are tied. It's a draw. <laughs> Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Good night.